The only other object in the solar system that has liquids on its surface is a moon of Saturn. It's called Titan. What I would like to do if I had the opportunity is to go fishing there, to look for <laughs> fish. Because if we find fish in those oceans of methane and ethane on Titan, it would mean that there is life as we don't know it. Common sense is not common in academia. <laughs> and uh, when I went to the expedition, a lot of scientists, uh, I wouldn't say a lot, but a few of them uh, were arguing that I will not find anything and that they don't believe the US government. We went there, we found materials. We found molten droplets in the site of the fireball from this meteor. And we brought the materials back and I gave them to my colleague at Harvard University, a well-renowned uh, geochemist named Stein Jacobson. And over nine months, he used the best instruments in the world to analyze them. And we realized that the chemical composition of 10% of the molten droplets that we brought back was different than materials from the solar system that was previously reported in the scientific literature. So, so we found, we believe, material that may have come from outside the solar system, but the droplets that we discovered were less than a millimeter in size. They were the size of a grain of sand. Wow. But they looked very distinct from sand because they looked like metallic marbles. And when I took photographs of them on the ship and wrote some medium uh, reports about them, my daughter saw the... Uh, the images and she said that they, they look so beautiful because they look like metallic marbles and she said could you uh, put one of them on a necklace so that i can wear it and i said well these are less than a millimeter in size they're made mostly of iron you can't thread them uh, and uh, but they look beautiful and um, the hope is that we can find bigger pieces. So we are now planning the next expedition, hopefully within a year. It will cost six and a half million dollars, much more, four times more than the previous one. Uh, and we, would, we will be looking for bigger pieces, perhaps even the wreckage of the core of the object that collided with Earth. And for that, we want to use a remotely operated vehicle, an ROV that we put on the ocean floor and uh, have a video feed so we can see the pieces that we are picking up. That's why it's, it's more expensive. Uh, and we are now seeking the funding for this uh, expedition and hopefully we'll get it soon so that we can start to build the tools that we will use. What did your colleague find from the samples? We found a chemical composition that looked very different than the crust of the Earth, Mars, the Moon, asteroids. So it looks as if it's material that came from another star. To figure it out better, we really need bigger pieces because what happened is these molten droplets lost some of the elements that made them in the explosion. These are called volatile elements that can evaporate and be lost during the explosion. But if we find bigger pieces, they retained all the elements that made the object. Also, we can tell what the object was like. We can tell the difference between a rock and a technological gadget. Just imagine a computer. If you were to burn it up and melt it, you would find droplets left over. So it would tell you that the composition was unusual, but it will not tell you what the original object was. However, if you find a big piece of the screen, then you would realize that it's not a rock. And so if we find a gadget at the bottom of the ocean, and it has, for example, buttons on it, the fundamental question is, should we press a button? And I asked uh, my students, <laughs> I asked my students in my class, what do you think I should do? And half of them said, please don't do that. Don't press a button because it will affect all of us. 
And then the other half of the class said, please do, because we are really curious to know whether, you know, maybe it's a chat GPT 100, you know, it will do some amazing things. And then one student raised his hand and said, well, given the split vote, what would you actually do, Professor Loeb? And I said, I will take it to a laboratory and study it, examine it before engaging with it. So don't worry. <laughs> However, we didn't find a gadget as of yet. <laughs> if the US government has such a thing, I want to see it. When you, so were there any, so there were elements that we've never seen before. Well, we've seen the elements because the tools that we use to analyze the material, they're looking for elements from the periodic table. They're not looking for something outside the periodic table. So we look for elements that are familiar, but the concentration, the abundance of those elements was very different than you find in the crust of the Earth or on Mars or in asteroids. So, so it's just the, it's just like ingredients of a cake, you know, it's how much sugar you put compared to flour and so forth. And we found that the ingredients have very different concentrations than in solar system materials. Interesting. By up to a factor of a thousand. These were elements like beryllium, lanthanum, and uranium. So we had to invent a name for this material and we called it Belau for these three elements. Have you, I just saw this thing the other day where we have, it sounds like, and this could be, this could be social media garbage for all I know, but supposedly we have found another planet with water. Oh yeah, water we know exists in many places, but it's not a guarantee for, for life. And moreover, what we usually find is water vapor in the gas phase. What we want to know is whether liquid water exists on another planet because the chemistry of life as we know it happens in liquid water. I think they and were saying this was liquid water and with an There atmosphere. was a, a, a possibility of explaining the size of the planet given its mass if it has a large ocean, water ocean. So that you know, that is indirect evidence. To have liquid water on, on a planet, you need an atmosphere because if you take solid ice, water ice, and warm it up in vacuum, it just goes straight into gas, into vapor. It doesn't go through liquid. The only way to get liquid water is if there is external pressure from an atmosphere. And to maintain an atmosphere, you need a massive planet like the Earth. So when you see comets, they carry water, ice, but when they come close to the sun and they get warmed up, the water turns into gas and there is no liquid water on the surface of comets. And so um, the only other object in the solar system that has liquids on its surface is a moon of Saturn. It's called Titan. And that liquid is methane and ethane. It's very different than water. So there are two objects in the solar system that have liquids on the surface. The Earth has water and Titan has oceans and rivers and lakes of methane and ethane. And the temperature on the surface of Titan is just 90 degrees above absolute zero. So it's about a third of the temperature of Earth above absolute zero. So it's very cold, but these liquids exist because they're methane and ethane. And what I would like to do if I had the opportunity is to go fishing there, <laughs> to look for fish. Because if we find fish in those oceans of methane and ethane on Titan, it would mean that there is life as we don't know it. You know, we are often searching for life as we know it, but there could be other forms of life. And an interesting place to visit is Titan. And actually in 2028, NASA will launch probes to Titan 
Uh, the project is called Dragonfly, and we might know more about whether life exists in Titan. I was interested in that for another reason, because the temperature on the surface of Titan was the temperature in the entire universe when it was roughly 100 million years old. So it was hotter early on the universe and then it cooled as it expanded. So the radiation that fills up the universe right now is only three degrees, 2.726 degrees above absolute zero. So it's freezing. But when you go back in time to when the universe was uh, just a tenth of a, a percent, a, a, sorry, to a time when the universe was a percent of its current age, the temperature was the same as the surface temperature of Titan. So that means that if you had moons or planets with ethane and methane on the surface, they could have been warmed up enough just by the cosmic radiation. They don't need to be close to a star like the sun. And so life could have existed everywhere very early if we find life on the surface of Titan as we don't know it. And uh, I'm very much looking forward in within uh, four years to learning whether there is life on Titan because it would say something about how early life started in the universe. Wow. No matter where you're watching Sean Ryan show from, if you get anything out of this, please like, comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this everywhere you possibly can. And if you're feeling extra generous, please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify podcasts.